I have a snare drum here in front of me because I got two questions regarding snare wires, snare wire adjustment, strainer, whatever. So two birds with one stone, I figured it's doing both in one shot. So uh, Diago, doesn't say where he's from, but he's got a question about the uh, adjustment knob. He just put some new Pure Sound 20s on his snare. And he's just saying the issue is that my adjustment knob of the throw off, he's got it on pretty tight. When he plays a song, it comes loose on him. And um, he's getting a little bit of response, but he has to keep constantly adjusting the, um, the, the tension knob. So he's wondering if he installed his wires wrongfully. And um, yeah, he's, he is mentioning though that when he, when he installed them, he had his throw off engaged in the adjustment knob more on the middle position. And he's wondering if he did that the right way. The other email I got is from Jeff. He's in Pennsylvania. And uh, yeah, another custom pro guy. He, he put some new pure sound wires on his snare. And he's just saying here, I tried installing and centering the twisted wires. Twisted, nice. Um, the twisted wires with the strainer in the on position. Problem was the wires weren't tight enough to produce a good snare sound, even with the adjustment knob cranked. With the strainer in the off position, I found that I had to install the wires offset to account for the strainer um, pulling of the wires into the right position, blah, blah. So, yeah, a couple of questions about snare wire tension, snare wire installation. Let me just say for the record that installing snare wires is without a doubt my least favorite aspect of being a drummer. I can't stand installing snare wires. I can assure you that there's no exact science to how I do it. Um, the way I do it just kind of works for me, but it's never a one-shot deal. Like it, it normally takes me just a couple of times to sort of kind of readjust whatever. Um, Sometimes it depends on the snare too. Sometimes when I do it, first shot, wicked. Other times it might take just a couple of little adjustments. But for the most part, the method is the same. So let me show you how I do it. So whenever I install new snare wires, I always do it the same way. So first thing I do, kick off the throw off. I loosen the adjustment knob all the way off. All right. And then I'll put on the new wires. So what I'll generally do is I prefer strap. I'll mention that. Um, you just get a little more consistency with straightness when you're using strap as opposed to string. Um, but yeah, so I'll put, the, I'll put the wires on. And then what I'll do is um, feed them through the butt ends. But I won't tighten them down all the way yet. I'll just kind of do them both, maybe finger tight-ish. And then I'll offset it because once you put that strainer back on, it's going to pull it back to the center. So that's the point where I pretty much just eyeball it. Like there's no science to that. I just kind of eyeball it, put it slightly off center, um, and then I'll tighten it down. Flip the snare back over and um, just tap on the top of the snare like this because what I want to do I don't want to um, I don't want to interfere with the tone of the snare so if you're if your attention knob is too tight you're totally gonna to kill all the tone from the snare so with the snare off um, the strainer in the off position, tap on the top of the snare. That tone that you're hearing, you want to keep that. All you want to do is add a little bit of sizzle. 
So once I get the wires on there, then I'll just kind of tap on it. And as I'm tapping on it, I'll just bring those wires up. Just until they touch. And that's it, I'm good to go. Now if you're dealing with an issue where your um, tension knob is always coming loose while you're playing, I don't know what kind of snare you got, but it sounds like a case of just being a cheap snare. Um, because with most, most of the mid to higher end snares, you don't run into that issue. Um, there's a little bit of, uh, there's a bit of a tightness with these strainers so that you put it in a position, it's just going to stay there. So it's been an issue with cheaper snares where because of just the build quality of the strainer, sometimes it'll come loose on you. Um, so I don't think it has much to do with the position of your wires or, or how you had them installed. Um, but anyways, yeah, man, I mean, that's, that's basically how I do it. The method itself is fairly simple, but it's just the centering of uh, the wires that sometimes takes me uh, a couple of tries. But yeah, I, I loosen the, uh, the, the tension rod all the way off, or the tension knob, and then flip the snare back over and just tap on it, and then just turn it until the, uh, the wires make contact, and then I might just tighten it up just a little bit more. But that's all you need, man, It's just a little bit of sizzle, because you don't want to kill the tone. That's how you get the fullness of your, your snare. It's just by adding a little bit of sizzle to the tone. So try that. Start over again. Throw off your, your snare strainer. Back that adjustment knob all the way off. Make sure your wires are centered. And uh, yeah, you know, just, just pull, pull your strings or your straps just tight enough. That's the other part that might take a couple of tries. You want to just pull them just tight enough so that you still have room for the, uh, the adjustment knob to bring them up. If you make them too tight from the beginning, sometimes you won't even put that back on because you stress it out too much. So that's the part that just, you know, it's gonna take some practice and just might take you a couple of times. There's no real science to it that I've found. Um, you just have to sort of eyeball it and use your judgment. So yeah, unfortunately, man, that's, that's the most professional answer that I have for you. Like I said, I hate changing snare wires, but you know, it's not something that you really need to do too often. Um, so yeah, try that. Hopefully that works for you. Aaron is from North Carolina and he's got a question about modifications. He wants to modify his bass drum. He's got a 24 by 17 and um, he's just saying here, over the years, the groups I've played with have taken a much more mellow tone and I no longer need the attack that I get with my old customs. He's looking for more tone. I'm considering cutting down the bass drum to a 14 inch depth and redoing the bearing edges to 30 degrees, which I think would reduce some of the attack and bump up my tone. Um, but this is just my theory. I'd rather modify my current kit than go out and buy another. Curious to know your thoughts. Well, if you saw my reaction just now, you might get an idea. Um, I'm assuming you have experience with cutting shells, modifying shells. Either that or you're going to get a professional to do it. Either way, man. Um, if you're going to do it yourself, I can't guarantee you're going to get the result that you're looking for. You're talking about chopping off three inches and, um, you know, hoping that you're going to get more tone out of that. I'm assuming you've tried every combination of drum head and drum head tuning 
before you came to this decision. Really makes me nervous when people start chopping their drums up looking for a different result when a lot of times the answer is just in a head combination or specific tuning. So my first bit of advice to you is don't ask me because I've never chopped up a drum before and I don't ever plan to. I would consult a proper drum smith. Just find just an independent guy that builds drums. There's plenty of them online. And just talk to a guy that does it, you know, three, four times a week and ask him if that's going to be a, a smart move. When you talk about cutting a shell down and recutting bearing edges and all that kind of stuff, you got to be, there's no margin for error, man. You got to be 100% accurate when you do that kind of thing, or you're going to be really disappointed. So you said, you know, you'd rather modify than, than uh, buy a new kick. That's your call, man. But I mean, if you're going to pay somebody to do it, he's going to charge you a few hundred bucks easy. And by the time he's done, you might have just paid for a new bass drum anyways. So that's the first thing that I would suggest. Just call a dude that does it all the time and ask him first before, uh, before you do anything. The other thing I would ask you, if you're looking for more tone, is do you have a hole in your front head? Because if you do, you lose an air and you're going to lose a little bit of tone. When you have a hole in the bass drum, it just increases the punch. So what you could do is just put a solid head on there and learn how to play off the head as opposed to burying the beater like most of us do. With these larger bass drums, 24s especially, um, you almost can't play those size bass drums the same way you play a 20 or a 22 because there's so much air moving around in there, you get a lot of flam action that gets really annoying if you're burying the beater, right? There's just too much going on in there. So even when you slap it, it's going to bounce back on you and you get this little flam effect. But if you learn how to sort of, you know, you learn that technique where you're playing off the, um, playing off the head, if you have a solid front head, you're going to get a crap load of tone out of that bass drum without having to cut into it. So those are my two suggestions, man. Just make sure you exhaust all of your options before you start taking a cutter to your, uh, to your bass drum. Cause that's, that's a permanent move, man. Like if you like the sound of your bass drum, that's a permanent move. So once you do it, it's done. If you do it and you hate it, you're going to end up buying a new bass drum anyway. So, you know, make sure you talk to a professional. And, you know, if there's one nearby, send it to him and let him do it. You know, if you have a little bit of experience, minimal experience, whatever, it's not something you want to mess up because you can totally crap out your kick, you know, if you, if you mess it up. So, yeah, man, that's the one thing. And then the other thing, too, is just exhaust all your options. Try a solid front head. Learn how to play off the head instead of burying it. Like I said, 24 inch kick, man, you're going to get a crap load of tone and woof. It's going to sound awesome um, with a bass drum that size. But like I said, 24 inch kicks, 24s and 26s, you can't play them the same way. You have to play off of those heads to get the best sound out of them. So try those. Hope it helps you out. Hopefully it doesn't cost you too much money to, to get it done. So that's about it, man. Thanks for your questions. Send them to askbeatdown at gmail.com. Try to do this once a week. Like, subscribe. See you next video.